guys, I'm Adam. This is Brian. We're with E3 Farms Association. Today we're going to talk about minimum EDC or minimum everyday carry. Now, Brian, we've had these conversations before of, you know, not only a when to carry, but what to carry on you. You know, and I get the question a lot of, you know, uh, what else do I need? Do I need, uh, how many mags do I need? Is there any other support equipment I need? Things like that. So we're going to really break this down nice and simple. What's the minimum EDC that you need? The minimum everyday carry? Well, um, I would say the minimum is pretty straightforward. The minimum is the gun. That is the tool, that is the ultimate tool. So that is truly, if we really get down to the minimum, yep. that is the minimum right there is the gun. And of course, other things go along with that specifically. Obviously, you want the, the gun to be loaded in a capacity that's you know ready, ready to be you know, used mm -hmm. immediately. And we need the gun in a safe holster. We can't just, you know, mm -hmm. the days of taking a gun and just stick it in your waistband or something like that, it's just not safe. One, you know, you certainly don't want the gun to fall out or anything like that. And you really need the trigger guard retained and covered by something. You, you wouldn't want a piece of clothing or something to get caught on that trigger or deactivate a safety mechanism if you have a manual safety on your firearm. So having a gun and having it in a good quality holster uh, is gonna be important. And the, you know, talking about holster is another whole subject, uh, but you know, you obviously want a good quality holster that's specifically made for that gun is gonna be important. And with that, obviously you need the, the legal ability to carry it. So yeah. if, uh, if a permit's gonna be necessary or maybe a badge for an off-duty police officer or something like that, you're gonna need that legal document to actually carry. But the gun is really the minimum EDC. Yeah, and I think the way you said it is more importantly, it's not just the gun. I know people that have the gun unloaded in their pocket with no holster. Well, having the gun is minimum, but in a safe way, and also so you can effectively use it. Because what yeah. good is having your minimum EDC being your firearm but you can't even effectively get to it to, to you know, effectively uh, yeah. deal with any situation. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, does it? You know, so obviously, you know, uh, the gun needs to be loaded. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's a given, right? Gun needs to be loaded in a quality holster and mm -hmm. easily, readily accessible. And you've trained to get that out. So mm -hmm. that's key. So let's take it from there. So, you know, if I could have two things with me, if I could have the gun and something else with me, my next choice would be a flashlight. Uh, be a flashlight all day long. And, you know, often asked, you know, well, why the flashlight? Why not, uh, why wouldn't spare ammo be number two? Well, because the reality is bad things happen in the dark, you know. Uh, you know, th things often, you know, violent encounters, things like that, happen typically in low light or dark type of situations. And if you can't identify a threat, well, then you certainly can't shoot at it. That would not be responsible. So being able to have the ability to uh, beam up and identify a threat in a low light or a no light situation is going to be important. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were just having discussion off screen. It's a deterrence. Yeah, it is totally a deterrence, you know, and the flashlight is a powerful defensive tool in itself, not only from an impact weapon standpoint, you know, it could be used as an impact weapon, uh, both, both from the deterrent of maybe getting some temporary distraction, things like that. There is definitely some merit there. Um, you know, we, we were talking off screen, like I was saying, of you know, well, do you need it during the daytime? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes is the answer. You know, you go into a house, well, and you go into a basement. It's dark down there. How about if you're in one of those big box stores, whether, you know, it's a, you know, a, a big general purpose store, or, you know, a, a home improvement type of store, and you're in the back 40 of that store mm -hmm. surfing around for something, and the power goes out. You know, you need a light just for general purpose. The light is handy. Not just from the <clears> defensive <throat> aspect, but just general purpose of using a flashlight. I use the flashlight I carry all the time. You know, and, I'm it's, sure you and it's part of, you know, when we talk about our training, part about our training is never getting to a, a situation where you need to act with a firearm in the first place. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that you can do beforehand. So that's part of your training. So an example, like you just said, a flashlight. I've had incidents where, you know, I come out of a movie theater, it's night, and where the cars are, it's very dark. And I've been sitting, standing by the car, getting close to my car, and there's people coming my way that look shady, and it's simply saying, hey, how you doing as you walk yeah. into your car? That in itself is enough to deter somebody from coming at you. Totally, or, or you know, next level. and they read you loud and clear when you did that. Yeah. You know, they know, hey, this person's aware, you know, they know, they know we're here, you know, obviously he's got some, he's prepared, you know, things like that. So that goes a long way. It's just, just that simple little tip that Brian just gave there, that, that's key. You know, so the flashlight is an important tool, you know, mainly because bad things happen in the dark, you need to be able to positively identify a threat before you even ever thinking about engaging. And it can also be a 
weapon if yeah, you needed it to be. Yeah, certainly, you know, certainly be, a, be an impact weapon and just good general purpose. So having a flashlight is uh, definitely important. And I'm not talking just, a, you know, a plastic flashlight that you pick up at a convenience store. <laughs> We're obviously talking about yeah. a good quality defensive light, like maybe like this one Surefire here. Or Surefire or Streamlight. There's some great companies out there making some great products. You want it to be rugged. You know, and uh, it's putting out high output lumens, you know, so it's really going to do the job. Yeah. So that's going to be important. So that'd be number two on the list. So, you know, you got the gun and you got a flashlight. Okay, so Adam, uh, if I could have three things, you know, wh what's number three? Spare ammo. You know, having the ability to reload your gun at least once, I feel is important. You know, so if you're carrying a, you know, five <clears throat> shot revolver, you've got a speed strip or a speed loader with five rounds in it or even more. You know, if you're carrying a, you know, a, uh, eight shot semi-automatic pistol little micro gun while well, you got another magazine ready to rock maybe even a higher capacity magazine that fits in that same gun so having a complement of ammo to supplement your gun is uh, is going to be important for obvious reasons you know if I shoot to the point where I get a slide lock type of situation or you know I'm out yeah. of ammo you know you want the ability to reload reload your gun you know uh, and uh, also from a, a malfunction standpoint you could have some type of malfunction with your firearm and a reload may be necessary to get that thing back up to speed. Um, or, you know, I've seen cases, it's, it's rare, but it happens, you know, things happen, you know, uh, where you didn't even realize that your magazine, you're maybe carrying an ankle holster and your magazine is not even in your gun. You thought it was, um, or maybe it popped out, or maybe when you're employing it, getting out the magazine popped out and fell out. So having the ability to reload your gun is important, not just from the I ran out of ammunition standpoint, but dealing with some type of you know other type of situation that's going to be important. So those three things, you know, the gun, and we talked about what goes along with that, uh, a flashlight to identify, use as a tool, general purpose, a lot of good things there, and a way to, uh, you know, uh, supplement your, your, your primary gun with ammunition. So spare ammo, basically, is where we're getting at. So gun, flashlight, and spare ammo. You know, that, mm -hmm. and then, well, hey, then we get into, we're beyond minimum EDC at that point. So <clears throat> minimum EDC, for the point of this, this discussion, there it is right there. That would be so, what. So that's would, best. Yeah, that's you know that's um yeah that's uh, best. That's that's minimum. That's you know um, a walk out the door. You have that. You know you're 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 prepared for most most things that could happen. Is it ideal? Don't confuse ideal and minimum. You know yeah, ideally yeah, yeah. you know I got well, I got a rifle. You know I got all kinds of gear and or I got an ankle holster, got, yeah. second firearm. Yeah, exactly. A knife. Yeah, a <clears throat> knife. You know that's a, that's another one. You know to, knife would be my third one. Mm -hmm. You know I'm sorry my my fourth, my fourth one. one. If if we if we're going to go beyond, hey, what's the minimum? You know, uh, a, a knife would be right there. And really, for me, it's probably probably still at the minimum level. Mm -hmm. And not just a knife, like a, like a multi-purpose tool, something maybe has some utility to it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, besides just a knife. But knives are handy, generally speaking, for general purpose and could be used as a defensive tool as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so that would definitely be right there on my list, probably sitting right there at the number four. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could re really even probably make a pretty good argument um, of, you know, you know maybe uh, uh, you know swapping number three and four back and forth right, right, in the right. priority scale because you know uh, spare ammo and a knife or an edge weapon or a utility tool will be right there side by side at that number three four spot okay so now you get to the that's minimum yeah that's what this topic was well, let's just take it a little bit to the next level I mean because you whether it's ankle holsters, uh, even additional magazines. I mean, what's yeah. that next level that you talk about? Well, the next level, <laughs> I think we get back to the gun, you know, so you have your minimum gun, you know, and in most cases for carry, we're talking a pretty small gun. We're talking a, a micro pistol, a micro revolver, something that's small. You're that's talking about over and above your primary. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, so it, you know, that, that gun is, is typically going to be small, you know, so um, it going above and beyond, um, maybe think about just having a gun that's more substantial, you know, having a gun that you could sustain a fight with, you know, so a lot of these little guns we carry, you know, they're good for the situation of simply just getting away. And in most cases, that's your best course of action. But if you truly need to fight, you find yourself, you know, God forbid, in an active shooter type of situation, mm. or you got to move to safety with your family and there could be multiple threats or really high risk, dangerous type of situation. And we see these things happening throughout the country all, all the time, okay. you know, so uh, having a gun that's more substantial that we could actually sustain some type of situation with uh, would be would be what I'd so think about what's, beyond that. What's the main objective 
for a second gun? I mean, I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. And also because mm -hmm. there's always discussions out there. A lot of people just have misconceptions or they say, well, that's ridiculous. You really need another gun? Or that's ridiculous. You don't have enough ammunition yeah. in that gun? I mean, well, that's not lo the reason. Lots of things I think about. You know, so me personally, primarily, uh, yeah, and it's, it's pretty common for me to have two guns on me. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, not the paranoid level, it's the prepared level. You know, but, but for me, I, I like two guns. My primary gun is usually something I get all my fingers on. It's my primary go-to. It's got a reasonable amount of ammunition in it. I've got a, I've got spare ammo for it. And my backup gun, my secondary gun, is usually located somewhere where it's not as convenient. Like if my primary gun's in an appendix type of holster, you know, my backup, my secondary is typically like in an ankle holster, a pocket. You know, typically ankle for me personally. Mm -hmm. Just don't work, folks, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Um, you know, but, but why the second gun? Uh, let's say uh, you're with somebody who's competent. Uh, but maybe not carrying. Exactly what I do. Bam, you know? there it is right there. Go so, to a movie theater, and my daughter, yeah. who's trained, you know, she doesn't want to carry. And um, I look at it, and friends say to me, really, you really need, you don't have enough ammunition <laughs> in one gun? Well, usually no anyway. But, yeah, yeah. but the point yeah. is, is, it's not just so I have a gun yeah. because I'm, I'm Rambo or something. It's maybe I need yeah. to hand it to my daughter, or somebody else in my family, if a situation comes up that yeah. now we both have firearms in our hands and, and it's a great thought it really is you know really, really that's a that's a that makes sense you know so that's a that's a good reason to carry a secondary gun and, you know other thing is you know the fastest reload is a <laughs> swap into another gun you know so uh and sometimes sometimes things just don't work out you know um i found myself in a situations where i just can't get to my primary gun because of an altercation i'm dealing with and maybe my backup gun is the only gun i can get to um or you know something like that the, you major know, malfunction major or or ca yeah, catastrophic malfunction where you actually have a breakage, not something that you could clear with a or a jam. A smack you can't get rack. out quickly. And, yeah. yeah exactly. So yeah, know you almost need something that's uh, that's going to get you get you back in that fight to to stay alive and things like that. So. Uh, a secondary gun, you know, there, there's merit to it. And I realize a lot of you are thinking, oh, secondary gun? I'm just thinking about carrying one, you know? Mm -hmm. And we get that, we get that, you know, carrying a, carrying a backup gun or secondary gun is not for everyone. It may fit your lifestyle, maybe it doesn't. It's certainly something to think well, for about. for me it was, and I thought that way. Yeah. But for me, it's the more that I trained, the more that I was educated, the more that I became confident, the more they understood threats. And especially as I would visualize situations, because part of, the training and part of what I do to train myself is everywhere I go, whether it's a restaurant or movie theater, I always kind of think through, I visualize, well, if something happened here and somebody came through the front door, something happened and somebody, you know, how am I going to handle that? Well, if I had this or if my family's there, I could give them a gun. And I, I kind of think through, you know, how would I handle that situation? I mean, I don't consume my life with that. It's no, just part can't. of my thought process and how I train myself yeah. um, from, from that standpoint. So my point in saying yeah. that, sorry, yeah. is... Now I understand more and more because I go through that, why it's important to have, yeah. of course, the minimum EDC, but how it can really make a difference for your life and your family's life if you actually have that second one too. Yeah. So it's just, it took me a little more education and training. I became consciously incompetent. Yeah. So I got to that next <laughs> level where I knew that yeah. I need to take it to the next level. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, that ultimate level is unconsciously competent, right? Exactly. You know, so that's ultimately where we're all trying, to, trying to get to. That is, the, that is the master level, really. You know, you know you're not, not necessarily everybody's going to get there. You know, it takes a lot of training, education, and thought, and preparedness, and things to get into that. Um, but, you know, to, to kind of wrap up the EDC, minimum EDC yep. conversation, you, you, need a, you need the firearm, folks. You, you, you need the gun, and you need a way to employ it effectively and responsibly. So if we're gonna be responsible, we need to be able to see in the dark, we need to be able to identify in the dark so the light is important. And you know, uh, ha having the gun is good, but having a way to, to reload it, get it back and get in the fight is important. So having spare ammunition. And that, that third slash, you know, fourth one, I think those are probably a tie. Having some type of tool with you, and I, I mean a, a, a blade, a knife, or a multi, I'm a big fan of a multi-tool. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the, the multi-tools are great because I can do a lot of things with yep. a, you know, a screwdriver, a pair of scissors, a knife, and some pliers. Hey, I'm ready. let's take on the world. I got a mm -hmm. gun, I got a flashlight, and a multi-tool and some ammo. Let's, let's do this, you know? So, you know, that, that
that's that's the minimum right there you know and but again don't confuse minimum with the ideal setup that's a minimum minimum setup right there to sustain something and uh you know it, at least in, in your train with that training is important and you know that that's pretty solid setup you got that you're you're ahead of a whole lot of other folks out there i'll tell you that which is great all right thanks everybody this is brian and adam from e3 firearms association until next time take care <laughs>